Hi everyone, it's a ticket to Christ. Thank you for tuning back in. We are still in the No Greater Power series. We're just delighting in the power of God, just boasting in his power and just recounting through the scriptures some of the mighty things he did. We're looking at God's power in impossible places, in impossible situations, um, that God, um, the miracles he performed when people found themselves, um, humanly speaking, in positions or situations whereby they normally would be defeated, crushed, wiped out, right? And there are several instances of these situations in the Bible, right? Bringing the deliverance of his people from their enemies, um, and people who would normally be stronger than they are in the flesh, uh, who have defeated others, but through God, through his personal intervention, um, he brought them through. And so we're delighting in the power of God in when people are in places, um, impossible places, right? Or situations uh, appear impossible or you can't see a way out of it except God, right? So we're in Psalm 78 and we're not going to read the whole thing. It's quite long, but we're just going to sample... Um, you know, a little bit of it. It says, picking up from verse 12, marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers in the land of Egypt in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through and he made the waters to stand as an heap. In the daytime also, he led them with a cloud and all the night with a light of fire. He claved the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink out of the great depths. He brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned yet more against him by provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Yea, they spake against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, he smoked the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Therefore the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob and anger also came up against Israel because they believed not in God and trusted not in his salvation. Though he had commanded the clouds from above, and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them of corn, of the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels food. He sent them meat to the full. He caused an eastward wind to blow in the heaven and by his power he brought in the south wind. He rained flesh also upon them as dust and feathered fowls like as the sand of the sea. And he let it fall in the midst of their camp, round about their habitations. So they did eat and were well filled, for he gave them their own desire. They were not estranged from their lust. But while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. For all this they sinned still and believed not for his wondrous works. Therefore their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. When he slew them, then they sought him and they returned and inquired early after God. And they remembered that God was their rock and the high God, their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongues for their heart was not right with him neither were they steadfast in his covenant. Oh, wow. And you can read the rest from the start to the end because it's a lot. It goes through that. But what is jumping out at you? What are you seeing? What are you hearing? Um, for me, what I am focusing on are the miracles of God, like what he did. And if you go back to Genesis, no, Exodus, I believe, you will get the account of them fleeing from the Egyptians and then they come to the Red Sea and they look back and there the Egyptians coming after them and there's nowhere for them to go. 
except through that Red Sea, which God parted. And why this is a, a just really, it, that always just really inspires me because a lot of times we can find ourselves in impossible places. And that is the time to reflect on the God that we serve, that he's a God that is beyond human power and human ingenuity or imagination or, or our abilities. There's nothing that's impossible for God. And so they, God did the impossible. God did the unthinkable, the unthinkable, sorry, which was to part that Red Sea. And what a shock it must have been for all involved. But they went through that, walking through, imagine that, walking through the Red Sea and the waters are parting as you're walking, like walls, it said, on both sides, right? Verse 13, he divided the sea and caused them to pass through and he made the waters to stand as an heap. So on both sides, you have the walls of water. <laughs> you could probably see some fish on either side swimming, um, you know. And then during the day, right, they're led with a cloud and at night with a light of fire. So the presence of God visible, tangibly, you know, um, in front of them. And you would think... And that, oh, wow, they, that happened, that they would just have tremendous faith, tremendous reassurance, and tr tremendous trust. But throughout, you saw that their hearts were fickle, that no matter what God did, it was never satisfactory to them. No matter what he did, it was never enough. There was always that doubt. And here's what the scripture said. They, they, when it says they tempted God, it means that they um, tried to put God to the test. Because God cannot be tempted. So it means in this case that they tried to put him to the test, right? Um, asking for this, asking for that, like God was not providing for them, right? He even gave them water, right? Out of, out of great depths. He brought water out of a rock. He gave them bread from heaven. It said in verse 25, men ate, did eat angels' food, Right? That is amazing, getting bread from heaven, um, physical bread tangibly, uh, that God would, would just supernaturally provide everything that they needed, but still they were not, um, you know, loyal to him. And so I think that a good lesson as you meditate on what, and on the miracles of God, on his power, is to learn from this. As you meditate in, in the ways God has moved in your life, uh, remember how these people um, were not loyal to God, even though he did all the things that he did and learn from that and make a decision. You're going to be loyal to God and you're going to delight in him and keep um, consistently um, meditating on his great and marvelous works, meditating on his power, meditating on his goodness, meditating on his ability. And the last point I want to make is verse um, verses, let's see, for 41, right? Um, well, let's see, verse 36, 37, and 41. So verse 36 says, they did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. What does that mean? It means that they're saying, uh, saying all the right things, but their actions don't back it up. So it's one thing to say, God, I love you. God, I'm loyal to you. God, I'm going to, you know, I'm one of God's. I'm following Jesus. Jesus is Lord. But what is it that is showing up in your, in your, actually in your life, right? That's what it's saying here. And, um, and that was because their heart were not right, right? They weren't steadfast in his covenant. They didn't have a right heart toward God. And then verse 41, where it says they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel, right? When you limit God, it puts that, it's like uh, the faithlessness and saying, oh, God was able to do that back then for them, but he can't do this in my life. Or having a wrong understanding of what you're bringing before God. You don't put the Lord your God to the test. But the lessons here, me, uh, it, the lesson here, I believe, are the lessons because there, these are different incidences that happen. Is to trust God, it's to believe in His promises, it's to believe what He said, and to know His power and His ability. And so, in looking at these things that He did, feeding them from heaven, 
sending them bread, sending them meat, uh, sending them water from even a rock, parting the Red Sea, defending them from their enemies and protecting them, um, showing up tangibly um, through you know, a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire so that they could have that reassurance that he was walking with them and being with them. All these things are just inspiring and show us the, the detail of God, his compassion, uh, his empathy, his care, how thoughtful he is. And um, that he will always provide and satisfy, right? Um, uh, beloved, those are the thoughts I have. I hope that you do um, just really uh, get a lot of this as you meditate on God's powerful works, on his marvelous works, um, you know, in the Old Testament. And we're going to be continuing on with different examples, heading toward the new um, in, the, in the next couple of days. Hope you're having an amazing day. Take care.